In this example, we are analyzing a flames beam. Um, the overall span of the beam is 5.5 meter. The cross section of the beam at section A, as you can see, um, the beam is a continuous beam, and we know that it, it has a tension at the bottom and the compression at the top on section AA. Uh, and the shape of the beam at section A, as it is a monolithic construction, is a T-beam. So we have tension at the bottom, again compression at the top. The width of the wave here in this beam, BW, is 320 millimeter. And the slab portion will contribute towards the, uh, the co concrete uh, compression zone. Uh, we don't know to be effective yet how, how much width of the beam we have to how much width of the slab we have to take into account we don't know yet we'll find it out the depth of the slab tf is 120 millimeter here and the reinforcement in the beam is 4 and 24 bars and the effective depth up to the center of the reinforcement is 510 millimeter the compressive strength of the concrete is 25 megapascal and the FSY, the yield strength of the steel is 500 millim megapascal and the clear distance of the beam from other adjacent beams is 3 meter uh, so that means there are other beams here so if you look into this beam in, in this direction so um, so you will see the beams like this one so the distance the clear distance from one beam to the another beam is three meter so we have to estimate the effective width of the t-beam that is the width of the slab that will uh, contribute towards the compression zone of the concrete beam we have to take uh, we have to find that out and second we have to find out the design moment capacity of the beam in the positive moment reason that means in section a that is a positive moment reason we have to find out what is the moment capacity of this beam so let us first um, find out what would be the effective width of the slab that we have to take into account uh, in the flames beam so this is the continuous beam we have the span of the beam is 5.5 meter now drawing the bending moment shape of this beam so the bending moment of this beam will look like this uh, at the supports uh, middle supports it will have a negative bending moment and at the mid span of the beam it has a positive bending moment so these are the points of zero bending moments here and uh, we need to find out that that's what the distance between the zero bending moments is called as A. Now to estimate the effective width of the T-beam, that is the width of the slab that contributes towards the T-beam. B effective is given as the width of the wave plus 0.2 A. Uh, it is given in clause Eight point eight point two. Now here A is the distance between the zero bending moment and for the continuous beam we can take A as 0 0.7 L. And L here is um, 5.5 5 meters so it is 5.500 0, 0 millimeter. That means the B effective, effective width of the T-beam is BW is the width of the wave and we know that it is 320 millimeter. 0 0.2 times A which is 3850 and that will give us the effective width of the T-beam as 1090 millimeter. So once we know the effective width of the T-beam we can analyze the section now. So let's draw the stress strain and force profile for the T-beam now. The effective width of the beam is 1090. The effective depth of to the reinforcement is 510 millimeter.
So the stress profile looks like this one. Um, and as you can see here, we are assuming that the compression block is falling within, within the depth of the slab. Uh, we'll of course check this. We'll have to check this one as we proceed. Now drawing the force profile. Here we are assuming that the the depth of the compression block that is gamma KUD is within the depth of the slab and we'll we'll proceed with that and we will check the our assumption that is correct or not as we proceed. That means gamma KUD is less than the thickness of the slab TF. Uh, we further assume that it is a tension failure again uh, to analyze the beam. That is epsilon ST is greater than epsilon SY as we proceed. Um, now for this beam, we know that the area of reinforcement given is 4n24 bars. So the area of 4n24 bars is 1809.5 millimeters square. Also FC dash is given as 25 megapascal. And that means alpha 2. comes out to be 0 0.81 and gamma comes out to be 0 0.91 so this is from AS 3600 8.1.3 Now proceeding exactly like a single reinforced beam, uh, we equate the horizontal forces. So for the T-beam, see the compressive force is given by alpha 2 Fc dash gamma KUD multiplied by B effective is the effective width of the T-beam. ASD multiplied by FSY as we are assuming the tension failure. Now we can find the value of KU. ASD is 1809.5. FSY is 500. Um, 0.81. FC dash is 25 megapascal. Gamma is 0.91. KU is we have to find. D is uh, 510. And B effective we calculate as 1090 for the flange beam so we find out KU as 0 0.009 as you can see KU values for T beam comes very small and T beams are very ductile beams KU value comes very small now let's check whether our assumption that the compression block falls within the depth of the slab is correct or not so let's find what is gamma KUD so gamma is 0 0.91 0.009 and def, effective depth is 510 millimeters so that comes out to be 41.8 millimeter this is less than the depth of the slab given so our assumption that um, the compression blocks falls within the depth of the slab is correct Now further checking the steel strain to make sure that it is a tension failure. The strain in the tension steel is 1 minus KU which is 0 0.09 divided by KU which is 0 0.09. 
so we find out what is the strain in the steel is 0 0.03 so we know that this is way greater than the yield strain of the steel 0 0.0025 therefore the tension steel is also yielding our assumption is okay so we have both the assumption correct so we can proceed to find our ultimate moment capacity now for ultimate moment capacity we proceed as the singly reinforced rectangular beam here um, it is AST multiplied by FSY and the Libram D jet is D minus gamma K U D over two so that comes out to you know so that gives us our mu as 442.6 kilonewton meter phi is 0 0.85 if you can find 5 from table 2.2.2 .2 for ku is 0 0.09 uh, phi comes as 0.85 so with that phi mu comes out to be 376.21 kilonewton meter so the design capacity of the flames beam that we have is 376.21 kilonewton meter.